Hey everyone. Hopefully you're you're having a good day. Hopefully you're killing it. Hopefully you're living life the way that you want to live it. Uh, my name's Andy. My channel's Finding Value. Uh, I talk a lot about financial opportunities, typically in commodity sector, just because that's where all the opportunities are that I see. And one thing I want to touch on, I'm, I'm I'm hearing people, you know, they're they're down in a position or two or more, uh, and and I want you guys to understand kind of how the market moves, where I would be buying things where I am avoiding buying things. So for instance, Bitcoin has gone up a lot. You hear a lot of people talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the next thing. It's the next currency. It's the next this. It's the next that. Do you think I'm going to buy it when it's this expensive? And I'm not looking at the overall price. I'm looking at the rate of change before the price. So if it's at 55,000, 52,000, wherever it's at, it doesn't matter where. If you see a chart go straight vertical, I don't buy it doesn't matter what it is. I don't care what the narrative behind it is. I don't care who says it's good. I'm not going to buy it. I buy it before the move takes off. Uh, I'm not buying into something that's declining like, like it's water falling to zero. <clears throat> I'm looking for basing patterns. I'm looking for flat moves. I'm looking for, in, 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 in it just broke out of an uptrend. It pulled back some. That's where I want to buy it. I'm buying things when they're underpriced. They're undervalued. And they, they're just starting to move. In this presentation, I'm going to show you what I see as best as, as best as I can as best as I can describe. So I, I, here's we'll jump in here. I'm going to I'm going to do this presentation in, in understanding market moves and and describe kind of what I see and where I would be buying. Markets have these impulse moves <clears throat> called the Elliott Wave. Uh, I I did this. I did this presentation before I even knew about Elliott Wave. All I knew is that there was impulse moves and pullbacks, and that they all looked very similar. Elliott Wave kind of takes it one step further. Markets move using these impulse moves. They stair step higher or lower. They it, stocks pause. They do pullbacks in bull markets, both short term, medium term, and long term. They've got large up days. They've got smaller down days. That's what we're looking for in the patterns. Uh, these patterns can be seen with strength to the upside. That's what we're looking for. And buyers control the market and overwhelm the sellers eventually, leading to higher prices. We want to see controlled higher movements. We want to see the buyers in control. And going long, just, just an FYI, is an asymmetric bet. An asymmetric bet means that uh, you can gain far more money than what you put up uh, money-wise. A symmetrical bet means that you can win $100 and you bet $100. An asymmetric bet means that you can win 10 times your money, but you put up 1x. <clears throat> That's an asymmetric bet. So here's gold. Uh, and I just put these black lines here. The black lines indicate kind of the impulse move. So impulse move higher, impulse move higher, impulse move higher. And these are the pullbacks that go in between. This is looking at it from a multi-year chart. And some of these pullbacks are, you know, six years or six months in, in duration, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit longer. But those, those are the pullbacks. When do you think I'm buying this? Do you think I'm chasing price and buying it on this way up? No, I don't buy up here. I wait until it goes. I wait for the turn. See how this, this, this guy bottomed right here? It broke the downtrend line here. I'm buying right here. I'm loading up. And then I wait. I wait, 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 wait. Downtrend line break. Buy the living heck of it right here. Then I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait. Downtrend line break. I buy it here. Buy the living heck out of it. Then I don't buy anything for a while. What I'm doing is I'm just looking for the downtrends. I'm looking for the, I'm buying them right before the impulse move moves. And I might be buying other sectors when it's in between the downtrend line break. And here, I might be buying other things. I might be buying uranium or, or oil, which I do. I've, I was buying oil in this September, October timeframe in here in 2020. Remember, this goes only, goes only goes to November. I was buying oil massively in SM Energy at this time. And I'll show you. This is an old presentation, but I want to show you guys where I'm buying. I don't, when, whenever you see something go up like this and it goes kind of vertical, I never buy this. I never, ever, ever buy this. I wait for the breakout. I wait for the back test. I buy the back test 
or I buy the, the pullback after it's done. I never go chasing, chasing waterfalls or chasing price. So here's, here's a super cycle. This is from a really big viewpoint, 1900 to, to 2019. Look at the long-term government bond yield percent inverted. But, but just look at, look at this. It, it, it went in a cycle, down cycle, up cycle, down cycle, up cycle. You can correlate some of these cycles with these guys up here. This is the commodity composite. This is an impulse move higher, so to speak. Then you have a large, long, multi-decade long sell-off. Then we've got a big move higher. Sell-off. Big move higher. Sell-off. The impulse move higher are in the white areas. The gray shaded areas are the pullbacks, the recessions. We've been in a pullback. I am letting you guys know that we are entering a white period very soon here where it's gonna be moving higher in the commodity complex. That's why I wanna invest in it. We are going to see yields go up, which will be uh, good for commodities. Now, when yields go down, the Dow Jones Industrial Average does well. So whenever commodities go up, you can see these go up in the white sections. If you look down, Usually that correlates with a sideways to down stock market. This goes up sideways. This goes up sideways or down. This goes up, we're in a commodity move, move sideways. This goes sideways, we're moving on up for commodities. There's a move of money between different sectors during different periods of time. And the money moves are creating these impulse moves higher. Money's being drawn from this sector and moving to this sector. Money draws, comes out of the commodity sector into stocks. That's why you're seeing these things move higher and things shift. We've got tops and bottoms, volatility everywhere. So you, you get increased volatility at tops and bottoms. And what you're seeing is it's a fight between the buyers and the sellers. That's what's happening. Momentum changes and can be seen in the charts. And what I call it is that momentum basically comes off the rails. You're in a groove as you're going higher or lower. Then all of a sudden, something hits you off those rails and, it, and it, it's like getting hit on the head. It's like, boom, you get hit on the head and your day's confused. It's like something changed. You start seeing the volume spike higher. The ratios let us know uh, relative value. Market conditions change. You get interest rates changing. Real estate market's changing. Uh, you're starting to see the real estate market get hot. Where interest rates are going to start increasing. That's going to rotate money into different sectors. I use the 50-day and the 200-day. We're looking for those things to, to, to cross if you were in a downtrend and now you're moving into an uptrend. I'm looking for Trader Vic 1, 2, 3 bottoms and tops. The way things move matters. It tells us signs. Signs of things that are changing. This is a Trader Vic 1, 2, 3 bottom. Uh, we've got a one, two, three top reversal. You've got an uptrend line. We break the uptrend line, step one. We have a higher low. This is a low. This is a higher, uh, uh, I should say, a lower high on a reversal. So this is a high, a lower high. That's step number two. Then we make a new lower low. That's step number three. The opposite is for a bottom. You break the downtrend line, step one. You make a higher low, step two. And then you break this higher high, step three. We are in a new uptrend here on the right. We are in a new downtrend here on the left. Now, this chart is from November 3rd because I said, I am going long in Tilray. But look what we have. We have a, a nice big move coming on up. Huge volume selling this thing off. That is a top. Topping pattern, big volume selling it off. Uh, we are... Sold off, sell, going, going, going. Then you see the, the, the volume kick back up here. You've got a, a bottom here. Rocketed higher off this bottom. Sold off, higher low. Big volume stepping in, higher low. We're compressing up into this downtrend line. What do you think I did here? I created a channel. I presented this and said, I'm going long Tilray. 
This is where you buy it. You buy it when it's low and about to break a big downtrend. I think this went all the way to $60 um, at its peak. And then it's selling back off, the impulse move. Apple. Now, I don't know if this is a bottom, but I was showing you that we broke an uptrend line. We had a high, a lower high, and it was moving on sideways. We need to watch this for a, for a potential top. But I think this eventually pulled its way out of this top. Here's SM Energy. Big gold volume back here. Nice, cool little bottom going on. Lots of big updates, small pullbacks. Then we had the leak off of the sellers, and we created this higher low. Here's a low, a higher low. We're going to break this downtrend line. What do you think I did? I bought it. This was the 3rd of November. I was saying this thing's ready to go. Broke its downtrend. Go time. We're looking for downtrends. Downtrend, reversal formation, a couple of bottoming pattern, going into an uptrend. What do we have here? Contango. Bounce number one. Bounce number two. Bounce number three. A higher low. Look at this stuff. This is putting in a major bottom. Again, investing against the herd. Ratios are green in terms of oil, oil to gold ratio, uranium to gold uh, ratio. All those ratios, they're all good. They're all cheap. We should be buying. Market conditions are changing. Interest rates, real estate, housing starts, all that stuff. Technical patterns are showing broken downtrends across many sectors. Oil right now, we are trying to break its major downtrend patterns that I'm seeing. The market's telling us that we're right. Everyone else in the world can tell you that you're wrong, but the market is telling us we're right. And, and, and what I do is I buy. All supporting evidence is in our favor. We go with the data is telling us. Do not listen to, to other YouTubers, people with PhDs. Doesn't matter who they it doesn't matter who they are. You know how to read some charts. If you know the trends, you you can tell yourself that you're right by the downtrends being broken. Here's the platinum to silver ratio, platinum to palladium ratio, platinum to gold ratio, and the rhodium to platinum ratio. Guess what? Platinum's cheap against all the other metals. You know what I do? I buy platinum. That simple. That easy. Dow to gold ratio. Now, this remember, this was back in November that I, that I did this presentation that I'm trying to share with you guys on what I was doing, why I'm buying some things. Going sideways, this popped higher, and I think it's up around 17, 18, 19, somewhere in there now. Dow is outperforming gold. I think that will be short-lived. And it's going to be short-lived because interest rates are going to go up. They have gone up. They went all the way up here. They're continuing to go up. And they will continue to go up. Here's the listing prices of real estate. Median listing price, up everywhere. Double digits for the most part. Median days on the market, year over year, faster, faster, faster. Real estate's going higher. Confidence here. So it took me a while to block out everyone else. I listened to those with PhDs. I listened to elders. I made wrong decisions because I'm better prepared and more informed than people with PhDs and many elders that I came across. How is that? You just throw some charts together, look at some basic downtrend lines, uptrend lines, and see if they break. See if the patterns are changing. Most people don't even do that. You need to seek those who have done it before and learn from them. Again, this channel can help you do that. You find out that most people don't know geek about anything. Verify your thesis and strategies with data seen in the market. Look for confluence, the merging of many things. And again, this is when we want to be buying. We want to be buying the stealth phase and awareness phase. We don't want to be buying in this mania phase. You're chasing the stock. You're FOMOing it because you're going to get caught in this big old sell-off. Right now, we are in this stealth and awareness phase in most of the companies. 2016 was the absolute bottom. Give it a couple of years. We're, we're right in this area in here. We're about to take off. So this was an, an older presentation I wanted to revisit. Uh, markets don't move straight up. And what they do is they, they pull up, they pull back. I buy on the pullbacks. I don't buy when they, they've gone up quite a bit. Uh, if you guys are chasing things, catch yourself. Be patient. I mean, don't chase price. Just because you see something go up, just because you see a downtrend break, I may be 
I may be showing you guys like downtrend breaks. Watch my hypothetical portfolios, where I'm adding things. Why am I adding it? Some of them, you may look think that I'm crazy. You're like, this guy's, it hasn't even broken out of the downtrend yet. Why is he buying it? Listen to my expl explanations. The hypothetical portfolio I just looked at, it's up 33%. Now, I'm spreading it out. I'm using all the principles that I've talked about on this channel. I'm not chasing price. I'm buying it when things are down. Notice how I didn't buy everything off the bat. I'm slowly accumulating things into the portfolio. I'm buying things when they're down. I bought Norilsk recently that was down. I bought some of the, the gold royalty companies and mining companies. They were down, so I'd like, let's buy some. Buy it when it's down, when it looks like I see some strength, I'll add a little bit in. I want you guys to be successful. I really do. That's why I continue to go over a lot of these, these uh, presentations. It takes time. You're not going to be perfect. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some it's going to take some losses sometimes to, to really correct yourself and say, look, I'm chasing price here. What can I do better? I'm always buying. I'm not buying into weakness. I'm not buying into weakness. I'm waiting for the bottom, and then I buy when I see strength. That's where I want to buy. Now, if it's a, if it, if it's a physical precious metal where they can't go bankrupt, it's not anything to do like that, I'll, I'll buy into weakness. I don't care. I'll buy it when it's cheap, when the ratio is cheap. I just buy it indiscriminately. Cheap ratio, I'm buying like heck. That's just what I do. I'm hoping these presentations uh, are better preparing you guys for this. Now, if you feel like the day-to-day -day moves, the volatility uh, is getting to you, step back, take a bigger picture view. You've got good companies. Most of, these people, most of you guys have really good companies. You may not have the ones that I own. Freeport, McMurrin, McMoran, however you say it. Freeport's really good. Uh, Lundin Mining, all these different mining companies, a bunch of uranium companies, they're all good. They'll, they'll do fine. They'll do great over this next commodity bull market. We, we may see some short-term pullbacks. Use them as buying opportunities. If you're down in your portfolio, don't get down. Don't let it affect you. Look at the ratios. Stare at those ratios. Those ratios tell us value. Buy the value, the price will come. It may take a year or two. It may take four years. If you don't need the money in four years, don't worry about it. Keep cost averaging in. Buy the good companies. Buy them when they're cheap. Accumulate. And just hold on. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Leave comments below if you guys have any questions. Love to hear your guys' opinion. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.